Well, hello, and it's good to be back. So today we're going to find out just how excited this flat earther can get by seeing a lighthouse. It's a lot more than you might think. And before we get going, if you like what I'm doing, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. So I recently came across an interesting observation being discussed by Ranty Flat Earth and his fellow believers on a hangout. It was from the Red Pill Philosophy Channel and showed a view across uh, Key Biscayne in Florida. I think that rather than a red pill, he may have taken a little blue diamond-shaped pill by mistake. Have a listen to this. Oh my god! Oh my god, dude. Christ. Oh, Jesus. I know I sound like I'm just orgasming right now. I'm freehanding it because I didn't want to wait to put the tripod up. Oh my god. You can see everything, man. Oh. It's the first time I've ever gotten such clear shots. Sorry guys, I'm freehanding because I just I couldn't I couldn't wait. Well far be it for me to disturb someone when they're freehanding, so let's leave them to finish off, shall we? So a very excited cameraman was standing here, near Black Point, looking across around 13.7 miles of water to Key Biscayne in Florida, where he saw more than he thought he should. So let's take a look at Cape Florida Lighthouse here on the tip of the island. So Mr Excitable rightly says that around 22 metres of the 30 metre lighthouse should be hidden, ignoring refraction. Even with standard refraction, over 18 metres should be hidden. So what's going on here? So this is the lighthouse we see in the video. And if we overlay a photo of the same lighthouse taken up close, with the black section of the top matched up, it certainly looks like we're not seeing the whole thing. But we can see the trees in front of the base. And we can see the spit of rocks going out to the side here, which are very close to the water. So it seems we are indeed seeing down to the base of the lighthouse. So is the Earth actually flat, or could there be another explanation? Take a look at the shape of the lighthouse. It's much shorter and fatter in the video than in reality. It looks squashed. In fact, if we squash the overlaid image, then we can see it now matches the observation much better. So before we jump to a flat earth conclusion, we should look at what could cause this sort of vertical image compression. The answer is some quite severe atmospheric re refraction. Voice of Reason recently re released a great video exp explaining why this occurs, which I encourage you to check out. The link is in the description. Basically, the closer to the horizon you get, or the smaller the angle of incidence of the light, the more severe the effects of refraction will be which can make objects appear compressed from top to bottom, as well as the making their base appear higher than it really is. This is the reason the sun can look squashed when it's close to the horizon. For another great description of this type of refraction, which requires a temperature gradient from cool air by the water to warmer air or above, take a look at the Baldy Cats video that I've linked to. So let's see if we can see more evidence of this and take a look at another scene from the video. This is Casa del Mar Condominiums, one of the tallest buildings in the video at 86 metres high. Take a look at the balconies on the left. You'll see that at the top they're quite well defined, while down near the bottom they're quite fuzzy and indistinct, as if the base of the building is compressed. We can see some trees which are masking the building's base, making it impossible to determine just how much of the building is visible above the horizon as these trees are closer to the camera and can grow up to 10 metres tall in this area. But under normal conditions, we wouldn't expect to see the trees at all. They'd be hidden by the Earth's curve. The obvious compression and image distortion certainly indicates strong refraction, but can we determine whether the refractive index was likely to be high on this day? Well, there are several clues. The level of refraction depends largely on the temperature gradient between the water and the air. The colder air next to the water is denser than the warmer air above, 
which causes the light rays to refract or bend downwards towards a denser medium, allowing them to travel around a curved path and make objects appear higher than they really are. On the day in question, it was exceptionally calm and still, so there was no wind to mix the air up and move that cooler air away from the water. At the end of the video, our orgasmic narrator stands in front of the camera facing south. And we can see the sun is lighting the left side of his face directly, indicating the sun is quite low in the east, so it looks like this was fairly early in the morning. This means the Floridian sun will be warming the air quickly, whilst the water will still retain the cooler temperature from the night before, and the nighttime temperatures had been below average for a couple of days before the observation. The very calm, still weather, below average temperatures in the days before and the early morning observation time are likely to have caused a significant temperature gradient between the water and the air, causing highly refractive conditions over the water, exactly as we've seen. So this was going to be the end of the story, an interesting observation, explainable but fairly unusual. I was going to suggest that it would be good to see the same observation under different conditions, but then I found that he'd been out before to the same spot and taken this footage. Wait, is that lighthouse underwater now? Taking a closer look, we can see that around two thirds of the lighthouse is hidden. And then modeling this out in Walter Bislin's very useful curve calculator, the link is in the description again, shows that under normal atmospheric conditions, this is exactly what we'd expect to see. Additionally, if you compare this lighthouse with the picture, you can see that it looks far more in proportion than in the first image, indicating that when we saw it for the first time, it was, and this is a scientific phrase I stole from Dell, refracted to shite. So how about, how about the buildings? Are they submerged too? Let's have a look. When we compare the two observations side by side, we can see that although far less of the building and none of the trees are visible now, it's taking up a similar height in the frame from the horizon and is much more clearly defined, proving that there was significant vertical compression in the first image, caused by greater light refraction around the bottom half of the building. And when I've measured this observation in the curve calculator, it again matches exactly what we'd expect to see with either zero or weak refraction. So here is what we would see on a flat earth, we'd see the whole of the building. Here is what we saw with standard refractive conditions, with most of the building visible, but the bottom 20-30% or so not visible. And here is the original observation with the horizon at the same level, but you can see the height is the same. So the entire building is compressed upwards, and you can see that from looking at the side of the building here, here it's much more clearly defined. Here, fairly clear at the top, but very fuzzy and compressed at the bottom. So the fact that we're seeing significant refraction here is ironic considering our narrator's views on refraction. If you take into account standard refraction, which is a joke, uh, it's literally a rule of thumb, even then 63 feet should be hidden. And he's partly right, it is a rule of thumb. Sometimes, as he's clearly shown us here, given the right conditions, we experience far greater refractive levels than normal. But it's no joke. So once again, a flat earther has shown us something which perfectly aligns with what we expect to see on a globe. I also note that all of the observations under different conditions are on his RPP P1000 channel, with only 40 subscribers. But it's only the one that most closely fits his Flat Earth narrative that made it to the 200,000 subscriber Red Pill Philosophy channel. That doesn't sound like someone searching for the truth. Those are the actions of someone looking to prove a preset narrative rather than evaluate all the evidence and think critically, as we have in this video. Well, after all of that, I was expecting something orgasmic, but all I ended up with was a peck on the cheek. Never mind. 
better luck next time. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, please like, subscribe, and share. And why not leave me a comment letting me know something you've seen recently that made you as excited as this guy was to see a lighthouse. Take care, and I'll see you next time.